So we're jumping into a topic called probability distributions up here. Uh, in particular, this time we're going to talk about discrete random variables. This video might be a little bit long because I'm going to try to cover a lot of stuff and then you can get stuck into doing some things. First of all, what's a discrete random variable? Before talking about the discrete part, we'll talk about this first bit here, which is just a random variable. And there's a nice little definition here. A random variable is one whose value cannot be predicted, but is determined by the outcome of an experiment. Now, they're using the term experiment here really, really loosely. So, for instance, a random variable might be people's heights, and the experiment is measuring their height. That might be a random variable. Um, a random variable might be the number of pets a person has, and the experiment is just asking them the question, how many pets do you have? All right, it's random. You can't predict it, um, but until you know, until you get told the answer, or until you find the answer through some sort of experiment. Now, what do we mean by discrete? Then, okay. So it's probably best to talk about um, discrete versus continuous variables just by looking at some examples. Down the bottom here, which of the following represent discrete random variables? The number of goals scored at a football match. Now, at a football match, let's assume we're talking about soccer, you could have zero goals scored, one goal scored, two goals scored, three goals scored. You can't have 2.5. You can't have 3.17 goals. So that is what's called a discrete random variable. Little um, definition, the variable can only take specific values. Let's look at the next one. The height of students in a maths B class. All right, so this one is not discrete because someone could be 174 centimetres, they could be 174.1 centimetres, they could be 174.00025 centimetres. It is continuous. So the variable can take an infinite number of uh, values. Uh, now, this term, we're going to be looking at discrete variables. Uh, later on, we're going to be looking at continuous variables. All right, shoe sizes. Well, you can only have a size 6 or a size 6.5 or a 7 or a 7.5. You can't have a 7.2956. It is a discrete variable. The number of girls in a five-child family. Well, you could have five girls, four girls, three girls, two girls, one girl, zero girl. Discrete, you can't have 2.79. And the time taken to run a distance of 10 kilometres in minutes. Now, some people might argue that this in minutes thing is misleading, as in two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, but you could have 2.579 minutes or 2.698 minutes. There are an infinite number of times that it could take a person to run 10 kilometres. So that is a continuous variable. All right, so everything that we're going to talk about for this one is discrete random variables. We just needed to know the difference before we get started. Form an experiment. Uh, let's toss a coin three times. So if I toss a coin three times, one, heads, two, heads, three, heads, great, I've got three heads in a row. Of course, that's not the only thing that could have happened. It could have been heads, it could have been heads, and then tails. That could have been another option there. It could have been heads, tails, and then heads. It could have been heads, uh, tails, and then tails. There's actually eight different things that can happen if you toss a coin three times, and you can show that pretty easily using a tree diagram. Heads, 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 tails, those eight. Now, let's assume that we want to know something specific. Let's assume that the variable that we want to talk about is the number of tails. So we can call our random variable X. That's a capital X there. We'll call it number of tails. Okay, um, now... Here, there were three tails. Here, there was two tails. Here, there was two. Here, there was one. Here, there was two. Here, there was one. Here, there was one. And here, there was zero. Let's look at that in a neater little table. So here's our neater little table. The number of tails. There is only one way to get no tails, and that's heads, heads, heads. So the probability of that is one in eight, because there was eight branches in our tree diagram. And all of our probabilities here, there's a 3 in 8 chance of getting one tail, there's a 3 in 8 chance of getting two tails, and there's a 1 in 8 chance of getting three tails. This thing here is something special. It's called a discrete random variable distribution. Take that table and formalize it a little bit in terms of our random distribution. Here we are. All right. Uh, now, I just want to draw your eye to a little bit of notation here. 
So here, this bit here, it says the probability that the number of tails is equal to x, one of the values. So the probability that the number of tails is equal to 0. The probability that the number of tails is equal to 1. Probability that the number of tails is equal to 2, etc. Um, just, you're going to use that quite a bit, so make sure that you understand what we mean. The capital X is the variable, in this case, number of tails. The lowercase x is how many times that, that occurs. So, two important things to note here. Uh, and it's pretty obvious because we're talking about probability, but they're very, very important and we can use them in a few different ways. So make sure that we write these ones down. Each probability lies in a restricted interval. Zero is less than the probability that x is equal to x, the, the random variable is equal to the value, is less than one. In other words, what that says is the probability something happens like a specific thing, like two tails or three tails or zero tails, is between zero and one. Oh, that makes sense when you think about it. You can't have a probability of negative something. You can't have a probability of 1.2. Probabilities are always between zero and one. So that's what our first bit says. The next bit says the probability of a particular experiment sum to one. That is the sum of all of these all of these p to the p x equals x is equal to one. Now again, that makes sense. It just means that the sum of something happening is e sorry the probability of something happening is equal to one. This number plus this number plus this number plus this number will always be equal to one because something has to happen. Two very important bits there. We'll be able to use them. All right, let's look at this. What this looks like on a graph. All right, draw a probability distribution graph of the outcomes. So the probability of 0 is 1 in 8. The probability of 1 is 3 in 8, uh, 3 in 8, um, and 1 in 8. And you can see it's got this nice little distribution to it. We're going to see that happen over and over and over again. Not all the time, but it's going to happen quite a bit. Okay, so we can also draw it like a column graph like that. We could draw it as a dot graph. But the dot graph is a little bit... I think I think it's better to have it as a, as one of these graphs or probably as a column graph. Important, they're not joining together because they're discrete. It's a column graph. You've got to leave a space in between each one. All right. So these questions here. Um, when I talked about uh, how important this little bit here was, the questions I'm looking at now apply those things. So let's take a look. Which of the following tables represent a discrete probability distribution? Okay, let's take a look at it. This first one, uh, the probability of that the random variable is equal to 0, 0 0.2, is equal to 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 1. Okay, two things. All of these numbers are between 0 and 1. So, tick. What about the second part of it? Well, not only are they all between 0 and 1, but if I do 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1, the answer is 1. Good. Okay, what about part B here? 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Uh, they're all between 0 and 1, all these probabilities. So if I add them together, 0.5 plus 0.3 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 is 1. So yes, that is also a discrete probability distribution. What about this next one? Um, negative 2, oh, sorry, the probability that it's negative 1 is 0 0.2. The probability that it's 0 is 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Now, you might get worried here because you see this negative 1, but the negative 1 is not the probability. The negative 1 is the probability, is the thing. So let's say, what is the probability that you, how many points do you score in some sort of made-up game? And in the made-up game, you can score negative points. So that's fine to have that there. You just can't have negatives here. And when I add, when I look at them, none of them are negative. They're all between 0 and 1. So that's okay. However, if I add them up, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.9. That's not, that doesn't add up to 1. So that is not a discrete probability distribution. This last one here, negative 2, 0, 5, and 7. Okay. We've got a problem here because one of the probabilities is negative 0.2. And a probability can't be negative. 
So that is not a discrete probability distribution. Moving on. Uh, that's just sort of some working there, like how I've come to those things. Next. Uh, okay, this question here, this is where you can start using a little bit of your algebraic sense. Well, that these are probability distributions, we need to find k in each of them. All right, so part A looks really straightforward to me. Uh, 0 0.2 plus k plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1. Well, that's super easy because uh, I know that 0 0.2 plus k plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 needs to equal 1. Uh, now I can sort of simplify that a little bit. Uh, that's going to be k plus 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So k plus 0 0.8 is equal to 1, therefore k is equal to 0 0.2. Uh, the next one looks a little more complicated, but only a little bit. 5k, 6k, 4k, 3k, 2k. I know that 5k plus 6k plus 4k plus 3k plus 2k equals 1. Uh, there's 11, 15, 20k there. So I know that 20k equals 1. So therefore, k is equal to 0 0.05. And I could then, like, I guess, go to one more thing. Find the probability that the random variable uh, has a value of 3. Well, if, or, yeah, has a random value of 3. 3k is my solution, which is 3 times that number, which would be 0 0.15. Um, so, pretty straightforward, I think. First question you're really going to have a little bit of trouble with, I think. Show that the function p of x is equal to 1 on 42, 5x plus 3, where x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, is a probability function. All right, so this is a, a function that you're only allowed to put the values of x 0, 1, 2, and 3 into it to get your, your value. All right, so, and then the p of x is the probability of x. So I can draw this up as a table. Um, your, your work example hasn't suggested this, but I definitely think you should be doing it the variable and the probability that x is equal to x. There's my table. 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. And then all I need to do from there is just sub in 0 into each of these uh, functions. So sub in 0 for that, and that will give me the probability of 0. Sub in 1 into that, and that'll give me the probability of 1. Now, they've already done that for me, so I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to bother doing it. When x equals 0, um, p of x, I put 0 in there, 5 times 0 plus 3, that's going to be uh, 3 over 42, which is 1 in 14. Um, if I put 1 into there, 5 times 1 plus 3, that's 8. 8 over 42, which is 4 in 21. Sub 2 into there, 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 is 13, 13 over 42. And finally, uh, sub in 3 over 7, uh, oh sorry, sub in 3, so 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18, 18 over 42, which is 3 over 7. Now, the question was, show that the function, blah, 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 is a probability function. So, we've, uh, we've, we're halfway there because all of these numbers are between 0 and 1. So for all p, x is equal to x, the probabilities are between 0 and 1. Now, if I take those numbers and add them together, 1 in 14 plus 4 in 21 plus 13 in 42 plus 3 in 7, I'm pretty confident the answer is going to be 1. All right, so we've shown that that particular function is a probability function. Now, if that weren't the case, if when I put in one of those, those values, um, the number that spat out was negative or more than one, it wouldn't be a probability function. If I added all of the probabilities up and it ended up giving me an answer of 1.1, it wouldn't be a probability function either. Um, all right, that, that's a long video. 
Uh, but it's everything that you need to know about discrete random variables.